with another episode of Back to the Future. We found Doc. He's in jail. And we found his younger self, who was really jittery and scared of his, his papa. And we had to try to convince him to help us build a rocket drill. So we're going to see how we do with that. I said, do you have anything to say about Doc? Hey, how you doing, Einie? Nope. Do I have anything in here? Okay, nope. Hmm. Maybe I gotta go talk to Doc. Oh, everything just gets so funky when it changes perspective. Wait. Ah, uh, hey. No, I don't... I think... I exhausted the dialogue options last time, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything different. Why does it keep... It keeps flipping my controls around every time the scene changes. Psst. Psst. Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? What are you doing in jail? I saw my grandpa. What do you know about Actually, Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. <laughs> that would explain a lot. Yeah. That also explains the newspapers that she had. Oh, I'm gonna save the notebooks What's the last. story with this kid tannin jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. <laughs> oh, my. Guess who I bumped I into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future you or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If this history crazy. plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kid Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Hey, okay, I'm not gonna do these two. Well, I met your younger self. Great! And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. You know, your younger You're self seems really law. dedicated to the law. It's, it's a legal facade, legal. I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says but he's not a scientist. I am what? in the background. What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Yep. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Uh, what do I do okay, to convince that Teen Doc sense. that I'm not a spy? I'm and not sure. Go. Thanks. That was... Why really does your helpful. younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, 
It was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. Well, you can never truly win unless you failed. I what does this X-Lab do with you muttering one? all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too That's bad. Really I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. Oh, no. Let's oh, no. talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay. I think but I know what I have to do. We're on I have to get him to talk to me about him. Ah, uh, deadline. Get it? Because you're going to be shot. Humor. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty sure we've got to go get the math equation from him and help solve it. No, why does it... It's just so backwards. It switches like halfway down the road. Hey Marty. Not Marty, I'm Marty. We hey, just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Dang it. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Oh, I got me nowhere. I can't even like, get out Damn of them. Uh, about your say it. Do this one. Oh, let's start over. All right. Well, that worked out. Not well at all. How am I going to find? Wait. What if I use the journal? No. Oh, no. Oh, dang it. I'll just wait outside for you to come back out in two seconds. Is he gonna switch on me? Nope. Can't stop you me just now. give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Dang it. I was supposed to use the notebook. Damn it. Uh, about your say it. Don't say it. Yep, I get it. Okay, that's fine. It's... Or do we take H to stamp with Hermitian? Doc's notebook doesn't belong to him. Okay, actually it does belong to him, but not yet. In any event, it's probably a really bad idea to give him a book full of all the things he hasn't invented yet. Yeah, that makes sense now that you say it like that. Maybe I use the photo on Doc? Maybe? Maybe? Some reason I stopped. I don't think that picture is going to do anything but confuse people. Most likely. Can I go and say, just give me a chance? Like, Harassment's a federal crime, I've Mr. Callahan. I know. I know it is. Uh, about your don't say it. Let's try. I don't want to mess up my picture of dad like that. Stop my picture of dad. I don't need to go don't in there anymore. anymore. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's no, a federal it, crime, Mr. Callahan. Sorry, you guys have to see how bad I am. Damn it. Uh, about your. Say it. Okay. So we have to figure out his math problem. Somehow. I don't think there should be anything in the super kitchen. I may have to use a hint. And it won't give you the time of day, perhaps if you two had something in common. Math! I know that part. Maybe Doc will help me with something. That hint did not help me at all. I go into... No, I can't even go to the Psst, station. Doc! Marty! How goes the escape plan? 
Um, I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after we save me from a grisly death in 1931. I'm still not making any headway with your younger self, Doc. Really? Uh, okay. Let's talk about your younger self's problems be. later. I know. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. I know what I have to do. I have to figure out the math problem. But I don't know how to do it. Wait. This guy was offended that the one other guy said he couldn't count. But there's also my grandfather who's good at math. We'll go talk to Cue Ball. <clears throat> well, that's the same. Okay. Dang it. Hey, um, uh, mm. never mind. It's my grandfather's... I think that's... That's the only thing I can think of besides talking to Einstein, but I don't know what Einstein could help me with. I gotta find my grandfather. Check this way. Can't go any more that way. Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Hmm. I better not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. They are. I don't need anything in there, and I don't have any money. I know you don't have any money. I really do. Hmm. Hmm. Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Nope. I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. Shark. Is that referencing the Jaws, like, 8 or Jaws 40 movie? Where the heck? I wonder, can I go more this way? Nope. The only other thing I can think of is going to talk to Einstein. Okay, I just really did not want that to happen. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Dang it! Do I have anything? Brown Estate, Klondike 51038. I'm gonna have to use another hint, guys. I'm sorry. I just. What's that muttering to himself about when, when he thinks you're not listening? Do I just have to follow him? And try not to get caught? Like walk by his side. Now up H stands for one the one dimensional harmonic oscillator. Then naturally each two A multiply by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A right. Or do we take H to stand for Hermitian line operator? But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to H expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass if acceleration is reduced by the inverse of the derivative of the speed relative to the speed of light? Oh, it comes back to H. Yeah, I'll follow him again. Just to make sure. You guys are probably all thinking this was so obvious from the beginning. Or 
are due, we take H, it stands for Hermitian line operator. But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A minus one P equals to A's expectation value. But only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is zero. Wait, is that even possible? I'll never be able to remember what young Doc's mumbling about. Wait a minute, I have something that can record, don't I? Yep. Come here, Doc. Come here, Doc. Come here. Gosh, dang it. Okay. Why won't I move? Dang it. Okay, dang it. Okay, I'm just gonna stay here and wait for him, because I'm pretty sure this is it. That way I can record him doing it and then take it back to Doc and he'll give me the answer. Move out of his way. Oh, think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I. Oh. Or do we take H to stand for Permitian line operator? Dang it! Oh, think, Emmett, think! H to the A oh, multiplied oh, wait, wait. by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse this of A, may... I, oh, oh. Doc will want to hear this. Trigger. Yep, I was going to say, it may trigger a memory. <gasps> Hallelujah! That only took like 10 minutes. I'll cut that out. No, no. Okay, Doc. Tell me how to help your younger self. Psst, Doc! So, Doc, does this up. ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied <laughs> by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good oh. grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> well, you don't get hung, you get shot, so really... It's fine. Dang it, I gotta wait for him again. I'm coming for you, Doc. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan! Shut up. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian Ooh. operator? Yeah! Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about gotcha. science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? Oh, I didn't even get to the say. the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? I need your rocket drill. I really need your rocket drill. I really, really need can your I rocket drill. Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's, that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! 
I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, yes. I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <gasps> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling oh, at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his that. business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago hiding. overcoat. I won't lie, I don't know what that is. I know that, like, the new shoes or whatever are, like, cement blocks to your feet. I'm gonna go talk to him. I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. Edna! Hey, babe. Nice bike. Huffy? Huffy? I'm not Huffy. I'm passionate. Passionate about justice, safety, law, and order. Uh, n never mind. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue hey, attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. I'm sorry about the way sorry Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their I mean, stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. An ordinance What's the scoop? <laughs> I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Look at you. Hey, I can help you deliver I soup. Help. I donate a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, uh, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just yep. fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not ones. get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I do know you. a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? Never mind, I'm wrong. The pool hall isn't a charity. Certainly not. Sorry. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to get that open. I know a place where the stay where sober society options? can meet. Oh, where? You could meet in the speakeasy, the one that got bombed last Wednesday. 
Now, wouldn't that be poetic irony? But I'm not sure the building is structurally safe. That's fair. I got a book. Oh? Where? Bye, cutie pie. I'm gonna go talk to this mobster. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? Forget about I'm it. I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to yep. shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm such a good shoe shiner. Edna Strickland thinks Talk your suit kitchen might not be on the up and up. That dame gets on my nerves. Got a great pair of gams, though. Oh, the other one's hey, actually. I represent United Charities of Hill Valley. Can you authorize me to pick up soup from your establishment and deliver it to some very deserving souls? Nah, that Strickland dame's got the charity racket pretty much locked up. No point in giving her competition. Dang it. How come you won't let the Stay Sober Society hold their meeting in the cellar of your soup kitchen? We got other plans for that cellar, and it don't necessarily involve staying sober. Another speakeasy. For a gangster mob boss, I don't know why he's telling all this stuff. I guess you won't talk shine. about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. Heh <laughs> yeah. Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh? Shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have a peanut? I don't have some peanuts. Know. Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! Get wrecked. What'd you do? Oh, it's a tiny wall. Oh. <clears throat> is that the random guy in the picture? Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! That's not gonna end well. Damn get it, Emmett, get it! Shazam! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Well, I do. Hey! Did he step on poop? Yes. <laughs> Fix me up! Where do you learn how to move now like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! Gross. Sweet. So I got my grandpa's hat, which I think is gonna help me later on. Let's see if we can go inside the barber shop and then. Might call it there. I better not go back in there. They're angry and they've got scissors. But I know that's where I need to go. You still not want to go in here? Probably should have got more information out of him before I did all that, but it's fine. I wonder who really burned down the speakeasy. Pretty sure it was Doc Brown. See, I'm holding down right now and I'm going right. I 
Let's talk to Doc. That was a. Ooh. Let's talk to Einstein. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. Einstein, oh, of course, because he was a patent officer just like you. Yep, that's why. We'll just go through all these real quick. Deliver and a lot be... of subpoenas. Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing just that can happen it. to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get in my <laughs> mouth off to my pop. Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. Okay, so I gotta give the hat to the dog. This subpoena's for Arthur McFly? Well, that'll be for the next episode, probably. Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a tannin, all right. This might be a stupid okay. question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. That's why you stole that plutonium. But couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? Garbage. I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? Pfft. Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. Nope. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was... a revelation. Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. Have you read The Time Machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. We'll get that subpoena hey. delivered. Or my name isn't... Harry Callahan! Yeah. Yep. That's me. It's Barry. Breathe it in. Okay. I'm going to... It's her again. See, right now I'm holding left, I'm going down. Actually, we're going to go into the soup kitchen because it saves. And then we're going to go back. Oh. No, we're not. We're both going to come in here. Hey, cue ball. Hey, what's in this? What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup? Soup? So he doesn't recognize well, me? Well, uh, just chasing this me. is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Very discreet. Wow. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Just try the soup. Well? He has my favorite uh, voice. I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Okay. So we will call that good there. And I will see all you in the next episode.